Hey, Entrepreneurship Scholars, welcome to Chapter 7. So, um, in the early, in the first couple chapters that we've talked about, uh, we've, I, we've identified ways uh, to attack markets, both domestically and internationally, uh, the different types of uh, trade barriers, the, uh, the different types of uh, export opportunities. Now we're going to talk about, hey, if you've got, if you've got a good product idea, um, how do you structure a business? How do you officially become a business? And there are a variety of different options uh, that are available to you. And depending upon where you are in the, uh, the maturation of, of the business, uh, will determine ultimately what type of business ownership you uh, you go after. But let's uh, let's let's start with the uh, the typical uh, business type of ownership. You know, as this as this picture of this young business owner uh, shows, the most common uh, type of uh, of business ownership is called a sole proprietorship. Uh, that just basically means it's a uh, it's a it's a one uh, one horse show. Uh, a person starts the business. They are the owner of the business, the sole owner of the business, and they have full responsibilities. And they get all the pro the profits. The um, the primary disadvantage of this type of uh, uh, business is is financial. Uh, you know, basically, if you're a sole proprietorship, you uh, that form of business ownership says you're going to come up with all the cash uh, to start the business. So that's the uh, that's the negative asso associated with a sole proprietorship. Um, now, the reason the sole proprietorship is uh, so popular is that it it is the easiest. Uh, way to get into business. Uh, literally, you could leave this class and go home today and you could become in a sole proprietor. You could start a sole proprietorship business. You could open a, uh, a business on eBay and essentially you could call yourself a sole proprietor. There's no paperwork involved. You're pretty much uh, good to go as soon as you uh, start selling your uh, your products. Now, the second type of, uh, or another type of business, is a partnership. Uh, let's say you and a you and a buddy uh, or a friend decide to go into business together. There's a variety of different uh, uh, kinds of partnerships you can you can form, uh, and uh, the advantages of a partnership is you get. Uh, uh, you know, you can put two or three heads together and hopefully come up with some better solutions. Uh, the disadvantages of a partnership is you better you better make sure that uh, uh, the the partner you choose is somebody that is uh, uh, you're fully compatible with. You know, as I mentioned in my classes before, it's it's probably more important uh, that you choose the right business partner. Then you choose the right person to marry, um, you know, and that's kind of tongue-in-cheek humor. But the reality of it is, you're going to be spending more time with that business partner um, than you will be with your wife or husband. So you have to make sure that person is totally compatible and and has a similar view of what needs to be done and how it's going to be done. Uh, but again, one of the most important things is in any partnership, there has to be at least one general partner. Somebody, uh, there can be multiple general partners, but there has to be at least one. By general, general partner, meaning someone that has full liability and responsibility for the, uh, for the company. Okay. Um, The cool thing, again, going back to the sole proprietorship versus the partnership, is if you are the sole proprietor, um, you get all the profits, nobody else, uh, and that's 
that's uh, that's the, the, the benefit of having made the total financial investment in uh, in cash as well as time, um, but also the negative, right? All the money has to come from you, but the benefit of that is you get all the uh, all the profits. Now, um, one of the cool forms of uh, of business is is called a subchapter S. And what this is, is a, the, the government has basically said, you know what, uh, if you are a, uh, a sole proprietor, but you want to take advantage of some of the uh, benefits of a corporation, and one of the benefits of a corporation is, uh, is lim limited liability, meaning that there is a barrier between uh, your personal assets and your business assets, things you own uh, uh, when you have a subchapter S. Uh, you know, let's say uh, in a sole proprietorship, if you were to get sued, uh, uh, the person suing you, if they, if they won the suit, could take all your business assets, but they could also take all your personal assets. Uh, the subchapter S basically solves that problem. It basically says, uh, you know what, uh, this person is a corporation, even though you know there there may there may be only one person in the business, and there is a wall between this person's personal assets uh, and their business assets. So yeah, you can go ahead and sue that particular company, but um, and that person, but you're only going to get uh, the assets associated with the business. You can't touch that person's uh, personal assets. There's also some tax advantages associated with a, uh, uh, a, a subchapter S. And, you know, as a result, it is, after a sole proprietorship, it's, it's probably one of the most popular forms of, uh, of business ownership. It's, uh, it's, it costs some money to set up. You have to get a lawyer involved, uh, but it's... Uh, it's typically worth it. In uh, my first company, uh, I, I set up a subchapter S, and it, it still exists today. Okay, uh, now if you are growing large and uh, would like to uh, get more people involved, like stockholders, as shown in this particular picture of the New York Stock Exchange, you might want to look at a C corporation. Uh, this is a much more involved type of ownership. Uh, it costs a lot more money to set up. Uh, uh, but if you're ultimately, if your ultimate goal is to get many more investors involved and, and potentially list your company on the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ or some other stock exchange, uh, the C Corporation is, uh, is the way to go. Now, um, you know, kind of bouncing back to the partnership area, uh, remember the term general partners because what that basically means is um, the partners, if they are all general partners, they all have unlimited personal and business liability for that particular entity and they take full responsibility for the management of the business. So as, as we talked about in those, uh, those earlier slides of the advantage of an S corporation or a C corporation, uh, you know, basically putting up a wall between your, uh, your business assets and personal assets, if you're, a, if you're a general partner or one of uh, a group of general partners in a company uh, and you get sued, uh, it's kind of like a sole proprietorship. They can go after your uh, your business assets, and they can go after all your uh, all your personal assets. Now, on the other hand, you can be partner. You can be part of a partnership, but you can be a limited partner. Now, uh, this is kind of cool from the standpoint that you could invest in a business and be an owner of a business, but you're not necessarily liable from a personal standpoint. You know, essentially what that means is 
you could have a combination and a partnership of general partners and limited partners. And the general partners here again would have full liability both for their personal and, and uh, business assets. Where if you're a limited partner defined in a partnership agreement, you can basically say, hey, you know what, I'm going to invest some money here, but uh, you know my liability is limited to the money that I've invested. Uh, I don't want you touching my personal assets. Uh, you know, just the assets that are associated with the business. So that's uh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Okay, uh, how do corporations work? What defines a corporation? Well, typically corporations are uh, actually chartered by the states. You literally have to make a charter application, and that's why you typically have to get a lawyer involved. And uh, the state recognizes your business then as a legal entity uh, that has the rights and responsibilities of a legal entity and the benefits, as we kind of talked about, of uh, establishing a wall between your business assets and your personal assets. So uh, you can incorporate basically in any state. Um, you know, some states are more popular to incorporate in than others. For instance, Delaware is a very popular state for many corporations to uh, to incorporate because of the tax advantages. Uh, Illinois has become less popular because as they raise taxes on uh, on individuals as well as corporations, uh, uh, it, the cost of doing business in Illinois is uh, is higher than in some other states. Okay, so um, a sole proprietorship again is is the simplest uh, is the simplest form of business. It is uh, owned and operated by one person. Uh, you know, as this this uh, back of the envelope uh, image shows, uh, you basically have all the responsibility and control for taxes uh, for. Uh, uh, profits. So again, the easiest way to get in, and it's owned and operated by one person. Uh, the subchapter S, uh, again, is in just kind of reviewing here, is a company structure uh, that protects owners uh, with limited liability. You know, the ability to separate your personal assets from your business assets uh, and protect those personal assets. Uh, limited partner, uh, as we have talked about uh, before, uh, it's the partner in a business whose liability is limited to their investment. Uh, so again, the general partner or partners take all the uh, the risk. Uh, limited partner can participate in a partnership, but his or her risk is is limited. Uh, a partnership in general is a traditional uh, form of business. Uh, you know, it's like a sole proprietorship, except there's a couple more people involved, uh, and it can be two uh, two people could define a partnership, or there could be several partners: um, general partners, limited partners. Uh, uh, the idea here is relatively easy to form. Uh, but uh, you know, it has the general partners have the same exposure as uh, as the owner in a sole uh, proprietorship as it relates to their uh, their liability both for their business assets and personal assets. Now, one of the recent types of business entities that have evolved is something called the limited liability company, and this is kind of a uh, a hybrid, uh, you know, something that I would call, uh, you know, kind of the, the the best of both worlds between a corporation and uh, this the benefits of a uh, sole proprietorship and general partnership in terms of uh, getting the business started. Uh, it doesn't require as much paperwork to set up, uh, and yet it still allows you. Uh, uh, the um, the flexibility and protections of a corporation. Um, you can actually 
have a partnership where the people in that partnership have uh, limited liability. Um, you know, the, the partners can receive various uh, percentages of profits, and um, and there are some tax benefits. So it's it's taxed like a sole proprietorship or uh, um, or partnership, but it's not. It and it does have the protections of a um, of a uh, of a corporation. Now, liability protection uh, is uh, is something that uh, all businesses want, uh, and so typically, just like you would you would have insurance on your cars, businesses have insurance, and they have that for a variety of uh, of reasons. Uh, the biggest reason is to for liability um, liability protection. Uh, I remember one of my businesses that I had set up was robbed. Uh, so literally, somebody came in and took you know 25, 30 uh, computers and our and our server. Uh, you know that was that was a uh, that was quite a shock. Uh, you know, it kind of put our business on its heels for several days. But uh, the good news was uh, I had uh, I had insurance on on the business, and therefore. Um, you know, all the losses associated with that theft were picked up by our insurance company. And, and quite frankly, and the nice other part of it, it, uh, it covered our loss of business during that time as well. So, uh, insurance is a, um, insurance is a, is a very, very good thing. Um, uh, last thing we're going to talk about is nonprofit organizations. Um, when you're a nonprofit organization, Basically, what you are declaring yourself is is a corporation um, that actually is in existence and can make money, but it's not for the owner's profit. Uh, it's basically for um, um, the benefit of the uh, entity that it represents. You know, so most charities are nonprofit uh, organizations. Uh, you know, even Maine East is, and District 207 is considered a nonprofit organization. Um, you know, you know our school district, you know, gets money in through taxes that your parents pay, and they spend money. Uh, you know, paying my salary and other teachers' salary, coaches' salaries, and uh, uh, the people that the uh, staff are building, uh, the uh, maintenance people. Uh, and they have life, they have money left over at the end of the year, hopefully. Uh, you know, as, as opposed to being taxed on that money, that money goes back as a surplus into the uh, into the organization, uh, and so it's not taxed uh, because there's no shareholders involved, and that's that's called a nonprofit organization. All right, guys. Uh, that's it. Have a uh, have a nice evening and be ready for the quiz tomorrow. Make sure you've got some great